In this tutorial in Microsoft Excel, we're going to deal more with named cells or named ranges. I'd like to show you how to modify the name, modify the cells it points to, or delete it altogether. Let me give you an example here. We have on our sheet something we used in another lesson, where we take uh, miles and gallons and we figure out the miles per gallon. We're using a named range. If I click on cell D2, it is miles divided by gallons. We got that by using named ranges. Let me show you. We drop down on our box that gives me my name box. Here's my gallons. And if I click on that, it shows me the cells to which it refers. Then we click on miles and it shows me the cells to which that refers and that's how it calculates. So these formulas here are words rather than cell references. Same properties, different display. Uh, then we have one with adjusted gross income. If we click over here, we have adjusted gross, which is 200,000. And then we have a cell called tax rate, which we set at 66% in cell G4. Now let's assume we want to change some of this. Well, how can we make adjustments? To change these things, we go into our Formulas tab at the top and click on Name Manager. This gives me a pop-up that shows me all of my names for a single cells or ranges. If we want to change, for example, uh, gallons, I can click on that. I can click on Edit. And then I can simply say, let's say US underscore, remember, you cannot have a space, you cannot start with a number. And so I just change that to be US gallon. So if I click on my name box here, now we have US gallons and that defines the same area. Let's assume we want to change the area that it refers to. How do we do that? We'll go back to name manager. I'll go back to my new U.S. gallons, and I'll, I can double-click on it or click on Edit. And this gives the reference of, of the cells. I'm going to click over here. Now we have the what's called commonly called marging ants. And I will take this area, and I will now include the first quarter of the next year. And then I click on OK. And then I click on Close. So now when I use the option to see what it refers to, I click on U.S. Gallons, and now it includes 15 months of data. These are all called gallons now. I just changed the scope of that. Another option you can have is you can change the entire reference. I'm going to click on my name manager again and uh, move that out of the way for the moment. Let's say I want to use not the tax rate, which is defined by this cell, but defined by the projected tax rate in my formula. Well, I will click here on tax rate and I'll click on edit and we'll change the reference. It's G4 on sheet one. I'll highlight it. Now we'll click on cell G5 and click on OK and click on close. And you notice it changed the tax. The formula here is the same but the rate is now referring to this cell here because when I click down here on tax rate, that now is the name for this cell. So, so on the formula bar name manager, you can add, you can edit, you can delete. Now what happens if I delete a formula that's in use? Let me show you. Let's take the um, adjusted gross that we just put in there and we'll delete it. It says, are you sure? Um, I'll play stupid and say OK. And I'll click on Close. And now, in the cell that uses the formula, it says, I don't understand what's going on here. And we have this uh, caution sign here, unrecognized text. And I say, uh, Edit in Formula Bar. And when I do that, it shows me the valid named range is tax rate, but now it doesn't understand adjusted gross anymore. 
So I need to go back in and define adjusted gross and it will work. So we'll go back here and we see it's missing now. I, I deleted it. We'll say adjusted gross, enter. And now it understands because I renamed this cell um, back here to be my adjusted gross cell. And so when I use the formula, it works. Again, I click down here for adjusted gross and it highlights cell I3. I'm Jim from the Sharper Turtle. It's nice to be able to change the name of a cell range or change the cells to which it refers or delete it altogether. If you found this lesson useful, we're so glad. We'd like to ask you to subscribe to our YouTube channel if you're interested in updates of more lessons as they become available. Also check out our categorized list of lessons at sharperturtle.com. Thank you.